this time on Standard Bread, the world's greatest stallion. But when we, when we purchased him, he, the Americans weren't that hot on the horse. He'd only, his first crop of two-year-olds, he was seventh on the size list. He had some of the best mares in America and he, they thought he would do better. And the horse Woodland Stud hope will be his biggest compliment. It's not so much his pedigree, it's a complete outcross, but the fact, I mean, he's, it's a good mare um, that he's out of, um, but more than anything, it was just such a super race horse. Plus, is this the most valuable standard bred foal on the planet? The greatest thing you can do is, is you know, breed a group one winner, and whether you've sold it or you've, or you've raced it yourself, um, satisfaction's great, that's, that's the name of the game. Standard Bread is supported by a stable of key players in the New Zealand standard bread breeding and racing industries. Better's Delight, a terrific harness racer with a stride that belies his stature. The best two-year-old pacer, best three-year-old. In fact, the United States Trotting Association's Horse of the Year 2001. He didn't win everything, but just about. Better's Delight, Scott McEnany and John Grant and Michel Lachance are headed for Cup 18 glory. What a sight, long and powerful strides. Better's Delight, a resounding victory. All the ingredients then for a prosperous post-racing career on paper, from a great sire line. And although Better's Delight was her only golden boy at the time, Classic Wish quickly came up with No Pan Intended, who won most of those awards two years after BD. Then came Roll With Joe, three-year-old pacer of his year, 2011. You get an idea now why this stroppy little fella could be a standard bred stallion of big repute. I went up to the States with a with a budget and um, started looking for horses. When the big bucks are on the table, it's never as clear cut. It was a judgment call from the Kiwi stud shareholder, Andrew Grierson, out on the hunt for the next big breeding thing. So I looked at several horses and um, the horse that I made an offer on was Better's Delight. But Better's Delight was small, nuggety, beautifully gated, squat small. What would the breeders think? If you were going to fault him, I suppose some yearling preparers would say they wish he was just another, their offspring were just another hand higher, I suppose. He t tends to leave some small horses, but as you know, those small horses can be you know, superstars. And you know, Lazarus is a classic example. He's not a big horse, but he's just an absolute fantastic racehorse. Yeah. It was standing super sire in the pocket initially at Woodlands that gave Grierson the birdie on his shoulder when decisions had to finally be made. When we lost um, in the pocket and he went down country, um, both Charlie and myself thought, well, the only way of really doing things right by the start is to actually buy into a horse rather than be part of a lease situation. It helped to have some inside knowledge on Better's Delight's earliest frozen semen results in New Zealand too. Better's Delight, I think one year from 16 or 20 foals or whatever it was, had the two-year-old colt of the year and the two-year-old filly of the year. So. We had expectations that he was going to click, he was an outcross. Highview Tommy and Arden's Darlin, not bad insider info at Trade Talks. We thought that he would cross really well within the pocket mares. As it turned out, he probably crosses better with his, with his son, uh, Christian Cullen. We've mentioned having a little luck along the way already in this series, haven't we? When we purchased him, he, the Americans weren't that hot on the horse. He'd only, his first crop of two-year-olds, he was seventh on the size list. He had some of the best mares in America and he, they thought he would do better. Mm. As it transpired, that, that two-year-old crop turned into three-year-olds and, and that ended up being the, the top crop yeah. of the year as a three-year-old and then his two-year-old crop below that ended up being the best two-year-old crop as well. So when we took him on the farm, he had two crops in North America, leading sire of two-year-olds, leading sire of three-year-olds. So people came, we, we served a lot of mares that first mm. year. 345 mares, resulting in 261 foals in 2007. You compare that with 10 mares for seven foals the breeding season before. Since then, the number crunches have never had it so easy. 
There's no bad BD data, unless you stand up against a barn door with a yardstick. I mean, when you look back over, over dominant stallions, and you know, Vance Hanover died when he was 12, you know, betters as 18 now and, and still going strong. Um, there's a lot of good race horses, super race horses that end up not being very fertile. And so he ticks all the boxes. He's a very fertile horse. He was a great race horse. He's got a very good family. And, um, and, and obviously he does it on the racetrack with his offspring. So he's hard to, hard to fault. A couple of incredible stats though. It's a matter of months before he sired 250 million worth of winners. That's a quarter of a billion dollars worth of winners. Compare that with, say, Art's Place, the North American benchmark before Better's Delight, who sits around 160 million. Better's Delight's obviously been, he's like the perfect storm. He's not only been a, a, a great sire of racehorses, he's also very, very fertile. And that's, you know, I've dealt with a lot of stallions that have been good sires, but I've never been able to serve the numbers that he can, so he's been, he's been able to capitalise on that. There are already 30 individual millionaires to his credit. Again, Art's Place has half as many. Yeah, trainers like them because they want to please you. Um, there's always been the comment that uh, they don't do very much at home. When you take them away, they've, they end up growing a leg. And yeah, I, uh, he's a competitive horse himself. He's always on the go and stuff like that. And I think that's in his mm. progeny. But he wants to please you. I mean, he nips and rears and carries yeah. on, but he hasn't got a nasty bone in his body. And a lot of his progeny, they say the colts nip and want to do this and that. but. They want to please you as well, yeah. and that's why they like them. What's not to like? The consideration amongst standard bread breeders now is, can you have too much of a good thing? In his 15 years at stud, Better's Delight has served over 7,000 mares. If you talk to Andrew at Woodlands, they're well aware of that. They definitely need to have another uh, an outcross to go in over all his daughters because we're going to have a lot of the Bitters Delight daughters floating around and they're going to be good. People talk about how there's so many broodmares potentially going to stud mm. and, and, there's, and there's several reasons for that. One, obviously he bred plenty of mares. Second one is that a lot of his fillies end up being good race mares. So, you know, that's, that's another thing too. So they're going to go to stud and... Um, it, those, those two factors, plus, you know, he's, he looks like he can leave a really good filly, so people are, you know, keen to breed on, on that line. So you're always going to see a lot of them come out. But go back to the breed, you know, like everyone says, oh, this is narrowing the breed in every direction. Well, you know, my calculation was that there were about 12 foundation broodmares in the standard breed industry back whenever, and one sire line, which was, and then it diverse from there. So, mm. so things will go in swings, swings and roundabouts, and there's... There's a lot of Christian colour mares going to stud. There's a lot of In the Pocket. There's a lot of Mac 3, Art Major, Better's Delight. They're all going to be dominant yeah. in numbers, and that's one of the reasons why the breeds improve so much. Mm. As a response, the American associations decided to cap the number of mares any stallion can cover. That was driven by the main farms. Um, there was economic benefits in doing that for them as well, but it was also driven by the fact they were narrowing the gene pool too much um, because they were they were really struggling to find where they're going to get the new outcross to come in. You know, where are they going to find a, a family that's going to come into their sire lines and, and inject a bit of hybrid vigour in it? So they were facing that, and I don't think they've solved that issue completely yet. Uh, yeah, they've got a different type of market from ours. I mean, a lot of, when we look at our, our um, climb base, there's a lot of people who breed to race, mm. whereas a lot of the people who breed up there breed to sell yearlings, and so obviously if there's a limited number they can sort mm -hmm. of tailor how much they're worth as a result of that. So we're, we're a different market. Um, we think, we, th we thought that by increasing the service fee would, would reduce his um, popularity, but he's, mm. um, we perhaps have to rethink that again and perhaps raise the service fee a bit more. Is it knee-jerk now to save the standard bread from better's delight with rules and regulations? I'd like to think that um, market forces dictate what happens. Mm -hmm. I think there's, there's always enough diversity yep. within the lot that market forces will do that. So, um, you know, there are sires which have served quite a lot of horses who, um, for whatever reason, um, never get to the broodmare paddock because people have decided that it's just not worthwhile breeding them. And so I, I'd hate to think that, that we would turn around and legislate to reduce the numbers. If market forces don't slow them down, Surely the laws of genetics will. The best broodmares in the country will be by Better's Delights. 
and uh, which I guess is what you're saying with the Christian Cullens. He painted himself into that corner as well. So that will be better to like the challenge for him because yeah, he's going to need to have another sire to go across those daughters. It's just too early to say whether he's going to be a sire of sires. Yeah. There's a there's a handful of of horses and, and the jury's out as to whether he's going to do it or not. Mm. And um, you know the the best performed horse in North America has just been syndicated to um, Standard Hanover Sh Shoe Farm called uh, Betting Line, mm -hmm. and um, so he's a he's probably the biggest horse to go to stud. Um, he'll probably end out close to winning three million. At 19, he's fit, he's fertile, the book's full, so better's delights on top of the standard bred world for a while yet. Isn't he? Age, you know, is this something that happens to to everyone, and and um, he'll he'll be the same. His his numbers of sperm and um, have have diminished over the last few years, but he's still, based on what other stallions do, he's still um, very very high up there. He can still serve a lot of mares, um, but as he gets older, that's going to drop. So you know, we've got to have that consideration in, in the back of our minds as well. Um, he's been successfully um, a horse that's shuttled very well. We've had no health issues with him. Uh, this year we had a bit of heat stress, um, but that was a transitory thing, and he bounced back after a couple of weeks, and his yep. sperm was back to normal. So, um, yeah, he's been a great horse to shuttle from that point of view, and uh, as you could see when you looked at him, he uh, lacks for nothing. He's, uh, he's doing well. He's on an on a enforced exercise program. He's on the walker every day. Um, we don't feed him very much. He seems to be able to look after his uh, body weight quite well with just doing very little, yeah. Like to know more about racing or breeding standard breeds? Find the New Zealand Standard Bred Breeders on Facebook or go to the Breeders website. Standard Bread is supported by a stable of key players in the New Zealand Standard Bread breeding and racing industries. As discussed in this season of Standard Bread, Better's Delight being the dominant force on fillies and mares, opens the stable door for stallions who complement his type and pedigree. For me, I think like a horse like Terra to Love, if he, if he lives up to his potential, I mean, he, he'll be a great outcross sire as well. So we will have the advantage, if you know, if we can get Auckland Actors to Lincoln and, and Terra to Love all doing a job, then they'll be a great option for our broodmare owners. Of course, Andrew Grierson and Woodland Stud have thoughts on a possible sire solution as well. Best move, top of the stretch now. Pierce trying to get more out of Sweet Lou. Better's Edge on the inside is sneaking up. Better's Edge and Sweet Lou are toe to toe. Sweet Lou, Better's Edge, Sweet Lou, Sweet Lou finds a way and a thrilling finish there. The showy, super fast Sweet Lou. He'd tick a lot of boxes for any stud farm, but like most American stallion prospects, he doesn't come cheap. It's a really expensive job to bring shuttle horses down. To bring him down and back again um, is you know, basically a $70,000 exercise in New Zealand dollars, excluding insurance. So the marketing strategy for Sweet Lou is the fastest, the greatest, straight off the track. Earned three and a half million, ran 147, could have run 145. Best two-year-old pacer of the year, standard bred of the year. Why do we do it? Um, because we're looking for the breed they have in America, but historically for us that's worked. Um, I know that you know Christian Cullen did a fantastic job down here and he was colonial bred, um, but we've always gone the other way a little bit, although do, we do stand colonial breeds here too. We've got Highview Tommy as um, a better slight son and we're hoping that he might do okay. But it's, um, we've always gone to North America for the right horses. And if breeders wanted to balk at something, it might be his bloodlines. Lou is as good as Yankee Cruiser's flag bearer. His next best performer is millions of dollars back. Art Escape did well in North America, but down under, not so much. On the dam side, there's a moderate son of the familiar Falcon Sealster. It's not so much his pedigree, it's a complete outcross, but the fact, I mean, he's, it's a good mare um, that he's out of, um, but more than anything, it was just such a super racehorse. And, and uh, he just kept on going. He was the fastest two-year-old ever recorded, yet he was riding off 147 mile rates when he was a five-year-old before he retired. And not many horses do that. 
retired sound. You know, he's just a lovely, good, durable horse that, um, and he's a decent size horse too. And a lot of time, you know, big horses like that have problems, but he didn't. He's just a, just a great advertisement for continuing to race a horse. As well as banking on his racetrack brilliance and durability for this day and age, something else caught Andrew's eye, other than that big, wide, white blaze. His half-brother's won 2.8 million and he's by Better's Delight. Does that mean he's going to cross? Who knows, but we, we, we're hoping, fingers crossed, because whoever can work that one out has got a huge chance for a sire to do really well in this country, because when you look at horses like Waikiki Beach going around at the moment, that's out of the Better's Delight mare, and um, same in North America, his mares are really doing something as brood mares. We bought him as an outcross, we hope, we've got a lot of better slight mares of our own. We hope that he would cross well. We're going to give him a huge chance, serving some top mares. And um, we've got about 20 foals on the ground so far, um, early, early in the season. And um, they're nice types, good natured, and um, but like himself, he's a pretty cruisy horse. And uh, who's to know? I hope so. To join the harness racing and breeding conversation, you can make contact with your standard bred breeders associations across New Zealand. Scrolling through the best daughters of Better's Delight list, you quickly come to this beauty. She's put up three, she's put up four, she's annihilating them. She's the very best in Australasia, might be one of the best in the world, look at her go. And Adorn Me has obliterated a top class lineup of mares to be beauty secret by six. Everyone will tell you who's a breeder. I mean, the, the, the greatest thing you can do is, is you know, breed a group one winner. And whether you've sold it or you've, or you've raced it yourself, um, satisfaction's great, that's, that's the name of the game fastest of BD's millionaires and third on the rich list, there's a case for Adore Me being pick of the crop. When the Queen of Woodland Stud struggled to conceive with Christian Cullen, who to turn to but Sweet Lou? Yeah, that's Charlie's mare and, and he made the decision and, and, and fantastic of him to do that. I mean, she's a, just a sensational mare, obviously. And um, yeah, she's... Uh, She's got a foal at foot, and I think on Friday I'm testing to see whether she's pregnant again back to him. Your ultimate standard bred mare, with your pick for perfect outcross stallion. That's called backing your judgement. The sweet Lou over a dormy pedigree page reveals a striking outcross option. There's no Camphala strain in Lou's line at all, and for the filly foal, Renee, down the track and into the breeding barn, an option of the direct scooter injection when it's time. The foal's a lovely foal and um, she'll get every chance and go to the best stable and um, hopefully that'll, uh, that and a few others will make uh, Sweet Loose uh, have a good chance down this part of the world. So we've backed them, there's no question of that. So is that the whole answer to the question, is there anything better than Better's Delight? I'd like to bring down a really nice trotting sire. Um, that could compete with the frozen semen because I think that that's not doing the industry any good at all. Frozen semen, although you know, we've bred a lot of mares to frozen semen as a veterinarian I have over the years, um, it's harder to get mares and foal. Often they don't foal till late in the season and that's um, impacted on the productivity of, of the trotting breed especially where so many mares have bred to, to frozen semen. To bring down a really nice trotting sire that, that um, people would say, wow, that's a great... Um, other choice to, to uh, frozen semen, that, that would be something I'd like to do. There's not a lot of money in that, but it'd be nice to do that for the industry. Woodlands has shown its hand. This peerless New Zealand stud farm and its standard bred breeders worldwide are keen to know how it all plays out. It's a revolving thing, you just gotta keep going, or once you stop taking in stallions, it's, it's the time that you're saying that you're giving up, but we're not giving up. Standard Brett can confirm Adore Me is successfully in fold to Sweet Lou with another early arrival on the cards next year. Christian Cullen is serving mares with his usual enthusiasm at Dancing on Moonlight Farm 
early results pending and anticipated. Sam Langrope and friends are on schedule with the standard reds. Their first foal from Kusadasi, Kadesla, is now a winner, giving the mare a black type credit straight away. Cardesla's coming down the middle. Tiger Thompson's gone to the lead. Cardesla's roaring home. Katura getting to third, but Cardesla, it's the one consistent prep so far, and Cardesla wins it in by a length. Pride and Joy Marksman continues to progress with enough natural ability to make an appearance at early season workouts and trials for two year olds. And after a minor injury, Mon Bay has set a new racing season alight in typically dominant fashion. Mon Bay starting to unwind, but it's still Harry of Mott. 125 to go. Mon Bay's coming after her now. He's back. He's too fast. He's too powerful. It's Mon Bay over Harry of Mott and Mark Kula. And Mon Bay, welcome back, old son. I mean, it's great to see him back. And yeah, you, know, you think when you're bringing them back, whether I, whether I. You know, shouldn't have given them so much time off. I was thinking of the big picture and, and then we had that hiccup that sort of crammed it, you know, so yeah, there's always a little bit of pressure there. On the other side of the ledger though, both his dam, Deirdre Darling, and a colt were recently lost to the hopes due to a fall in complication. The peaks and troughs of working and living with livestock. Something to contemplate toward the next season of standard bread.